Hi everyone, in this particular video we're going to spend some time talking about the importance of quantifying how much solute and solvent are mixed together. In order to be able to talk about those ideas, we first need to understand some of the terms that we use. So the word solubility refers to how much solute is mixed in a given amount of solvent, usually in mass terms. So for example, if when we say solubility of sodium chloride, at 25 degrees Celsius is 36 grams of NaCl in 100 grams of water. That means that solute at the most can dissolve up till 36 grams. So you can't add any more NaCl to that 100 grams of water. If you add more, the extra will not dissolve. A saturated solution is a solution that holds the maximum amount of solute under a particular solution condition. So for example, if the solubility of NaCl is 36 grams in 100 grams of water, if we have 36 grams of NaCl, that means that that solution is saturated with respect to NaCl. If you put less than 36 grams, that means that your solution is unsaturated. And then there's another term associated with this, which is called supersaturated. A supersaturated solution is a solution that can hold more solute than what's allowed by the solubility limit. And you might wonder how that's possible. Well, sometimes we can trick the system to dissolving more solute, for example, at higher temperature. And then when we bring it back to a lower temperature, the solid will still be dissolved. However, this is not a situation that we will commonly encounter in this class. If you go 40 grams, for example, of NaCl, the 36 grams will be dissolved. The other four grams will just exist as solid in that solution. So that still be called a saturated solution because you only have 36 grams that's dissolved. So I want to discuss a solubility curve. This is basically a curve that shows you how soluble a substance is at a given temperature. So if I look at NaCl, which is given by this purple line right here, you can see that at about 25 degrees, the solubility of NaCl, as we talked about earlier, is about 36 grams in 100 grams of water. Now there are other salts that are a lot more more soluble than NaCl at that same temperature. So if I go to 25 degrees and look up lead nitrate, that solubility is about 60 grams in 100 grams of water at the same temperature. So you can dissolve up to 60 grams of lead nitrate. And there's even things that are way more soluble than lead nitrate, for example, sodium nitrate, right, which is the solubility is about 90 grams. Uh, you have things that are a lot less soluble, for example, potassium dichromate, right? Now one things you notice the pattern of this curve is that as you increase temperature solubility tends to increase along with it so all the plots typically would have that type of a pattern. Sulfate salts tend to have deviation from the behavior. The reason for that has something to do with what we call entropy of that particular salt. Typically you would expect solubility to increase as you increase temperature. Okay so let's take a look at an example of using the solubility curve to help us answer a question. It says that we have 35 grams of NaNO3 in 100 grams of water at 25 Celsius, and the question is whether the solution is saturated or unsaturated or supersaturated. Now, the first thing is just to get rid of the supersaturated answer because, as we know, that's really not going to be a reasonable answer. That's going to be only happening in a very specific situation, which we're not going to consider. So it's either saturated or unsaturated. And the way we tell is by looking at the curve itself. So here we have NaNO3 and it's 35 grams of the NaNO3 in 100 grams of water. So let's find the NaNO3 curve and it's this one right here. So what we need to check is 25 degrees Celsius, which is right around this point. So I'm just going to draw a point all the way until it intersects with that curve. And that tells me the solubility. So the solubility seems to be about 93 grams or over 100 grams of water. So that means that that's the saturation level. Since we're given 35 grams, that means this is going to be an unsaturated solution. So once we understand the idea of solubility, then we need to be able to quantify exactly how much solute is dissolved in a given solvent. So we have two generic terms we use uh, to denote how much solute we have. 
relative to solvent. Dilute means that you have relatively small quantities of solute relative to your solvent, and concentrated means you have large amount of solute relative to your solvent. Specifically though, we have other terms that we use to quantify how much solute we have relative to solvent. So there's a number of these percent terms that we use. The first one is called mass percent, or the symbol is percent m over m, and what that means is that we're taking the mass of the solute and dividing that by the mass of the solution which is composed of both the solute and the solvent. So if you take this um, and you divide it and multiply by 100% that tells you how much solute you have uh, based on its mass relative to the mass of the solution. This is typically used for solutes that exist as solids uh, to begin with. So for example like sodium chloride it might be contaminated with other solids so we would express its purity by mass percent. Percent volume volume is typically used for solutes that are in the liquid state, they're mixed with other liquids. So the symbol for this is percent V over V. So the way you calculate this is just to take the volume of your solute out of a hundred milliliter of the solution. Um, this is, you know, often used for alcohol. For example, if you ever drink um, alcoholic beverages, it would say 5.2% alcohol, for example. So that means there's 5.2 milliliters of your alcohol out of a hundred milliliter of that solution. The other common one is weight volume percent or percent M over V. This is typically used in medicine because we would take a solid and dissolve it in water. Um, and so the mass of the solid is going to be given out of a hundred milliliter of that solution. So you take the mass out of volume in this case of the solution. So for example, if you go to the hospital and you're on a an intravenous uh, solution of sodium chloride or saline, it would say 1% saline, for example. So that means there's one gram of the sodium chloride out of 100 milliliter of the saline solution. More chemistry specific measurements is molarity and molality. So molarity or molar concentration is a very common one you will use in chemistry. This is just the number of moles of the solute in one liter of the solution. So one molar specifically means one mole of the solute out of one liter of the solution. This is really commonly used because you have the unit moles which of course tells you how many particles or compounds or molecules you have and that's really useful in doing calculations in chemistry. Molality is not nearly as common as molarity. Molality is the number of moles of solute but then out of the mass of the solvent, specifically one kilogram of the solvent. The reason we use molality is because a lot of what happens in chemistry experiments is we might change the temperature from a low to high temperature and when you change temperature the volume of the solution changes along with it however the mass of the solvent never changes and as a result when people are doing experiments where they are in the areas where temperatures are going to change and that's going to affect the volume they use molality instead to express their concentration so let's take a look at a question about concentration, in this case about molarity or molar concentration. It's asking what's the molar concentration of a solution that has 10.3 grams sodium bromide in 251 milliliter of the solution. The key here is to remember that definition of molarity where one molar, which has the unit capital M, is equal to one mole per liter. So what we need to figure out is convert the units to moles per liter and that would be the molarity. So the first thing is to take this to number of moles. Since we have grams right now, we have to calculate the number of moles of NABR and that's just 10.3 grams over the molar mass of NABR which ends up being 102.894 grams per mole and that would give us 0.100103 moles of NABR. Now we need to figure out what the volume is and it has to be in units of liter so the volume is 251 milliliter but of course to convert that to liter it will end up being 0.254 one liter. So then the molarity of NABR that we're given is just going to be 0 0.100103 moles over 0 0.251 liter and that would give us 0.399 and then moles per liter which can just be written as molar. 